He has uh, served the Buddhist community and doing missionary work. He served the country for more than 53 years. And for a person to do something consistently and persistently for such a long period of time, I think it's nothing less than remarkable. Definitely, I think if you look at the history of Buddhism in Malaysia, it's very much, uh, it, 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 can be, it can be connected to the chief from one way or, or the other. Like. Chief is actually like a leader to all the Buddhist community within this country, irrespective of whatever traditions. For Malaysians, uh, Malaysian Buddhism especially, there's only one icon and that's Chief Ben Lobo. For more than half a century, K. Sri Dhammananda has been a leading light in disseminating Buddhism in Malaysia. Although there are different schools of Buddhism practiced in this country, such is his deep impact on the community that he is affectionately known by all as the chief. I am the eldest son in my family. I have two more brothers, three sisters. And my father was not very happy because he said he's the eldest son, you must stay there. But the mother was influenced by the chief monk of the temple that he wanted to ordain this boy. Then the father said, we have two more sons, why not we ask one of them to become the monk? The chief monk said, no, I want only that boy. <laughs> the father had no choice. I was ordained at the age of 12. Being ordained as a novice monk at such a young age is not easy. There were moments when he wanted to quit the religious life. When I was about 18 years old, I saw all the other young boys enjoying their life, running here and there. And so I also got fed up with this way of life. <laughs> then I would just see my mother and told me I don't like to stay in the temple, I want to come back. Then the mother said, <clears throat> you must understand, we have two more sons and three daughters to attend to us, look after us. But if you remain in the robe as a monk, you can serve the whole country, the whole world. If you come home, you can support only your family. Not only that. When we are going to die, by thinking the other children, we won't gain happiness. But when I think of you, I gain happiness. Because you are leading a religious way of life, you are de doing some religious service to others. So we gain happiness. Uh, then I decided to stay back. <laughs> Shortly after arriving in Merlay in the early 50s, he received a letter from Sir Gerald Templer, the British High Commissioner. Templer, who had created new villages in order to curb the spread of communism, wanted to find out if there was a link between communism and Buddhism. He was a very clever man. He was the one who introduced new village system. People who were scattered here and there and asked them to come and stay in one area, then they cannot contribute to the insurgent. He heard, these communist insurgents are Chinese. Chinese are Buddhists. But he wanted to know whether there is any relationship with Buddhism and communism. So I received a letter asking me to go there to discuss this matter. Then I said, communism introduced violence. Buddhism introduced peace, harmony, understanding. Therefore, Buddhists do not contribute anything for communists to create violence. Then he said, in that case, 
why not to go to the new villages and preach and tell people? He said, yes. When we announced that we are going to preach, nobody wants to attend. Then what we did, we announced, we came here to bless you. Ah, then so many people assembled. After blessing, ah, then he had the chance to speak few words about religion. Then spread in every new village that he had at that time. Prior to his arrival in Merlea, Buddhism was taught largely in Chinese. It was the chief who began teaching Buddhism in English. Well, I think the Chinese, uh, Chinese Malaysians uh, of Chinese descent, they have been Buddhist uh, in the traditional form, traditional sense of the word. So there have been some access to teachings from Taiwan and China and so on. But the English educated uh, Malaysians who could not read Mandarin and could not understand Chinese, they were cut off from that source of, of information. So for a long time before Chief Reverend came, we did not have any access to Buddhist teachings. And many of us actually straight to other, other religions. But when Chief came here and he started teaching largely in English, and then when we found these teachings, then I think because of that, the English educated uh, Malaysians who speak English then found this readily available information on Buddhism. And I think that's, that's why uh, histor it's, it's a historical phenomenon that uh, a lot of the Theravadin Buddhists happen to be English speaking. It just happened that way. When I came here, at that time, they had only seven children in Sunday school. Then we started English classes to talk teachings and Buddhism and Sunday school. Right mindfulness, right concentration. If you follow this path, what we taught, then you can gain enlightenment too. All of us can. Now we have 1,200 Sunday school children. The chief has also tried to speak Malay, but often with funny results. I was studying Malay language at that time. Only a few words. A lady came to worship. She was standing. Now I wanted to tell her to sit down for blessing. Then I asked her, Tido. Then she ran away. I came and asked these people, what happened? When I asked her to Tido, she ran away. They said, no, Tido, Dudo. <laughs> the chief has always presented Buddhism in its essence, emphasizing rationality over rituals. But when the Chinese came to Malaysia, they actually brought with them a very degenerate form of Buddhism. It was all mixed up with Taoism, Confucianism, and basically some basic Chinese beliefs. So that was a form of Buddhism which our forefathers taught us and came down to us. No doubt that they uphold or they maintain Buddhism, their knowledge, their understanding about the teachings of the Buddha is very poor. They follow only tradition, custom and rite and rituals and ceremonies. That's all. Only Theravada Buddhists who have come from Sri Lanka started to introduce the real teachings of the Buddha, not only tradition, customs, and all this attitude. Now, educated people, Chinese and others, also slowly, slowly turning toward this Buddhist way of life by knowing the teachings of the Buddha. As the current chairman and founding member of the Malaysian Consultative Council of Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, and Sikhism, the chief has worked hard to foster interreligious harmony. I have written a booklet, Buddhist Attitude Towards Other Religions. There I have mentioned, instead of converting others into Buddhism, we can encourage others practice their own religion. That is the Buddhist attitude. Because we never say they are sinners and heathens and pagans and they go to hell and they cannot go to heaven. We never say. If they are good, if they don't do any harm to anybody, 
whatever religious labels they have, it is immaterial. They are labels. When I was in Australia in the hospital for my bypass operation, I was wearing the uniform suit, not the monk's robe. A lady came with the Bible because she does not know who I am. Told me the operation will be tomorrow. It is a very serious operation. You must have a holy communion today. I say yes. Then she read a passage from the Bible and prayed for me. I said, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> then a group of students from Malaysia who are studying in uh, New University of New South Wales, having heard that I am in the hospital, few of them came to see me. And although I was not wearing the yellow robe, by kneeling down, they pay respect to me. And this lady is watching. She cannot understand what is happening. Then she went to one of these boys and asked, actually, who is this man? Then she said, this is our chief Buddhist high priest in Malaysia. My God, I never knew. She came and apologized. Then I asked, why do you want to apologize? You have done very good service, good intention. I really appreciate the prayer that you have done for me. Ah, that is the Buddhist attitude. As a Buddhist leader, his popularity is unmatched. And of course, his character, is, he has very, very great charisma. He's, he really appeals to people, he's friendly, he's approachable. Uh, he's also very compassionate. He's very kind to people. Right? And anyone can just walk to his room at any time. Even now you can see, you can just walk to his room at any time. Even animals can go to his room. <laughs> we treat him as if like he is our altar father, you know. And uh, we practically grew up with him. Many of us, when we first came to KL to join our universities, we actually met him and uh, treat him as if like he is our guide and uh, guardian. He's a father to me and he's very friendly, very helpful and he is such a devout teacher, father, and He is an example, example for, for us. Then when we want to learn something, we need somebody can give us the teaching now. Because Buddha already no more here. Then from that, we learn from the chief reverend. The chief realizes that the future of Malaysian Buddhism lies in the hands of the youth. Chief has been instrumental in actually going to all the campus and then giving talks and especially leading the groups in discussion. So most of the Buddhists that you see today who are active leaders in this country, they're actually all from this batch of people who have actually learned Buddhism from the Chief. Malaysia is the only country where youths are very active to organize religious activities and to promote Buddhism. Even in Buddhist countries, it has like China, Japan, Korea, Tibet, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Burma, youths are not active. Elders organize everything, then youth come and slowly join with them. For Malaysians, uh, generally we feel that uh, we have a, a lack of uh, Sangha members, that is uh, renunciants, monks and nuns. So, to fill this gap, to make our community understand about the Buddha's teachings, the lay people plays actually a very important role. The failure or success of Buddhism in Malaysia, it depends on, on people like us, the young people, who is able to understand Chief, okay, learn from him, adopt his attitude, okay, and bring it forward. Now we have nearly 400 Buddhist group who are trying to introduce the teachings of the Buddha in proper manner. In Malaysia? In Malaysia. Always one to emphasize the original teachings of the Buddha, the chief defines Buddhism in its most basic forms. In fact, Buddha never asked anybody to come and worship him. Take for instance, when he was about to pass away, 
So many people assembled with flowers, then his attendant stopped them, saying it is not advisable to disturb the Buddha. The Buddha overheard, then asked what is happening. He said, many people have assembled here to pay their last respect by offering flowers and paying respect. Then the Buddha says, you must go and ask them to go back. Instead of offering flowers, instead of worshipping, they really respect the Buddha if they can practice at least one of the advices given by the Buddha. Uh, then they really respect the Buddha, not by worshipping. Uh, now you can understand what the Buddha wanted. As Buddhists, we have to do only three things. Keep away from bad, evil, wicked, cruel, dangerous thing. Do some service to others to contribute something to relieve their suffering and some service. Try to develop your mind to understand and purify the evil thought from the mind. This is the message of the Buddha. This is Buddhism. Only these three things we have to do. Showed me wisdom and guide me over way. You have sacrificed for me, leaving hard prints of your love. Rub my off my home, teacher and my savior. You're the hero of my life. Gave me everything. to